good evening all today our class is about factors necessary for erythropoiesis or factors regulating erythropoiesis erythropoiesis means formation of fern in this rbc and here there are three factors that are necessary for this formation of erythropoiesis in that the first one is stimulating factors first one is stimulating factor that means if there is reduction in the rbc in our in our body so there is something to stimulate the production of rbc in our body so in the, the some stimulating factors that stimulates the process of rbc or erythropoiesis process of erythropoiesis is first condition is hypoxia condition see we all uh, we are all very familiar with this word hypoxia hypoxia is reduction in oxygen in the tissues reduction in oxygen in tissues this is caused uh, this is mostly occurs while we climb to the some higher mountains okay next it is reduced availability of oxygen to the tissue is called hypoxia it, in this condition uh, when the oxygen is reduced there is uh, it stimulates um, when when there is reduction in the, of oxygen in our body this condition stimulates the erythropoiesis by inducing secretion of erythropoietin if there is reduction in oxygen in our body there is secretion of erythropoietin this erythropoietin hormone induces the formation of or stimulates the formation of erythropoiesis this erythropoietin hormone is released from the organ kidney it is released from kidney next um this is the first point and the second one is uh, the second stimulating factor is erythropoietin this is the hormone we already discussed while studying about this hypoxia erythropoietin it is released due to low level of oxygen it is also called hemopoietin or erythrocyte it is also called hemopoietic or erythrocyte it is secreted from the kidney and it causes formation and release of new rbcs into circulation after secretion it takes see this erythropoietin after secretion it takes 4 to 5 days 4 to 5 days to show its action it takes 4 to 5 days to show its action next this erythropoietin promotes production of pro erythroblastic stage it uh, promotes the production of pro erythroblast from cfue pro i mean i'm sorry pro pro erythroblast from cfue uh, we discussed about this word in the before classes you can see the uh, it uh, i mean this promotes the production of pro erythroblastic plastoblasts from cfue of bone marrow next development of pro erythroblast into it also promotes the development of pro erythroblast into matured rbc that means pro erythroblast is the first stage of erythropoiesis as well as matured rbc is the last stage of erythropoiesis so uh, so that we can know that uh, this erythropoietin acts in all the stages in the formation of this uh, um, i mean formation of erythropoiesis next uh, Uh, really, uh, it also helps in the release of erythrocytes into blood after maturation uh, after matured R, uh, matured rbc is formed uh, it helps in the release of these matured rbc into blood okay next in after uh, when it is released into the blood the blood level of erythropoietin increases okay if if this erythropoietin is uh, more than necessary the blood level of erythropoietin increases this condition is called anemia it may cause anemia okay i hope you understood next the third stimulating factor is thyroxine the third stimulating factor is thyroxine next being a general metabolic hormone thyroxine accelerates the process of this thyroxine accelerates the process of erythropoiesis erythropoiesis so hyperthyroidism and polycythemia are common in this condition or when it is increased or when it is more there may be cause of hyperthyroidism or polycythemia okay next 
the fourth stimulating factor is role of sex organs fourth stimulating factor is role of sex hormones the in here the testosterone has mild erythropoietic action that means this testosterone has some characters or mild action of as uh, erythropoietic erythropoiesis okay next uh, estrogen estrogen okay it acts on erythropoiesis estrogen is also acts on uh, formation of erythropoiesis but uh, coming to this uh, estrogen the condition what we have studied now that means it acts on the formation of erythropoiesis is not clearly mentioned or it's not clearly decided next the fifth stimulating factor is hemopoietic growth factors hemopoietic growth factors these hemopoietic growth factors or growth inducers are interleukins il interleukins and stem cells okay interleukins and stem cells these interleukins are glycoproteins interleukins are glycoproteins which belong to the cytokine family cytokine family next these interleukins are involved in erythropoiesis there are three interleukins that involved in erythropoiesis interleukin third one interleukin 6 interleukin 11 interleukin 11 this interleukin 3 is secreted by t cells that means i will write this side interleukin 3 is secreted by t cells interleukin 6 is secreted by t cells as well as endothelial cells as well as macrophages t cells endothelial cells as well as macrophages this interleukin 11 is secreted by osteo blast osteo blast these are about the hemopoietic growth factor stimulating factor of this uh, erythropoiesis the sixth stimulating factor of erythropoiesis is vitamins here the five vitamins are mainly acts on the formation of this uh, erythropoiesis first one is b3 b6 c d and e these five vitamins are mostly acts on the formation of erythropoiesis okay or on the stimulating factor as a stimulating factor or acts as stimulating factors next one we have completed the stimulating factor now the second factor that involved in the or that are necessary for the formation of erythropoiesis is maturation factors maturation factors that means in the stimulating factor the erythropoiesis or rbc is formed so after the formation of rbc the rbc should mature so in the maturation of this uh, rbc vitamin b12 acts mostly vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is also called as cyanocobalamin cyanocobalamin that's it this vitamin b12 is an intrinsic factor it is an extrinsic factor i'm sorry this vitamin b12 is an extrinsic factor of this vitamin b12 is obtained mostly through diet it is obtained through diet and it is stored mostly in liver and small this vitamin b12 is stored in liver as well as some small quantities in muscles also along with this liver some quantity in muscles when necessary it is stored in liver when necessary transported to the bone marrow from liver to bone marrow when necessary only when necessary transport to bone marrow and it promotes maturation of rbc this is about vitamin b12 and now coming to the intrinsic factors of kessel second maturation factor is intrinsic factor of kessel it is produced in gastric mucosa by parietal cells of gastric glands it is secreted by gastric mucosa by parietal cells of gastric glands next it is essential for the, uh, here why this intrinsic factor of kessel is important or helps in the maturation of rbc is this vitamin b12 mostly acts on the maturation of rbc next uh, maturation of rbc but this vitamin b12 itself won't absorb by anything it is absorbed because of this intrinsic factor of 
Casein, because vitamin B12 is extensive factor. This, I mean, vitamin B12 is an extensive factor. So then, A is also absorbed by the cell. So then, absorbed by the cell means that it is mature. Then, absorbed by the cell means that it is an intrinsic factor. So, that is the intrinsic factor of Casein. Intrinsic factor of Casein. The intrinsic factor of Casein is used in the cell. Vitamin B12 is absorbed. Next, the third maturation factor is folic acid. Folic acid is required. It is required for synthesis of DNA to mature RBC. RBC to mature completely, it needs DNA. So this folic acid is required for synthesis of DNA in RBC. DNA in RBC. These are the maturation factors. And the third point is factors necessary for हीमोग्लोबिन फॉर्मेशन हिचबी फॉर्मेशन और हीमोग्लोबिन फॉर्मेशन देर आर फाइव आई मीन फाइव फैक्टर्स दैट आर हेल्प्स इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन फर्स्ट वन इज फर्स्ट क्लास प्रोटीन्स एंड एमिनो एसिड्स फर्स्ट क्लास प्रोटीन्स एंड एमिनो एसिड्स प्रोटीन्स ऑफ हाई बायोलॉजिकल वैल्यूज आर नेसेसरी फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन हाई बायोलॉजिकल Values. Next, this is about proteins. And next, amino acids derived from these proteins. That means proteins derived from high bi uh, biological value helps in the formation of hemoglobin. And the proteins uh, from these proteins, these amino acids are derived. Okay, from these proteins, some amino acids are derived. The amino acids that derived derived from these proteins. Helps in the synthesis of protein part of hemoglobin, that is globin. The amino acids that is derived from the from these proteins having high biological values helps in the formation of hemo protein part of hemoglobin called globin. Next, uh, next one is iron. Next one is iron. Iron is necessary. See, we have already. Uh, there, uh, there, uh, there is formation already. There is formation of protein part of hemoglobin that is hemoglobin. So after that, iron is helps in the formation of heme part of globin. H C A M heme part of globin. Sorry, H C M E heme part of globin. Okay, next after this iron, the copper. Uh, after iron, the copper. This copper helps in the formation of iron. Simply next cobalt and nickel. Fourth one is cobalt and nickel. These two metals are essential for utilization of iron during hemoglobin formation. These two factors are utilized by this iron. Next vitamins or vitamins. Vitamin C, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, and vitamin B6. Vitamin uh, C is citric acid. Vitamin B2 is called riboflavin. Vitamin B3 is nicotinic acid. Vitamin B6 is peridoxin. Okay, these are the factors that are necessary for the formation of this hemoglobin. I repeat again: uh, proteins and amino acids. Next, iron, uh, copper helps in the formation of iron. Next, cobalt and uh, nickel. is used by iron for the formation of hemoglobin okay this is the cycle so easy to remember this is for today thank you all we will meet again tomorrow